on. I've got an important announcement for you all. Hey. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yay! laughs> Time for some Type 40, Extra Type 40 video exclusive content with me, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. Welcome back to the channel. Who's, who's calling this time? Who's with me this time? I'm happy to say we have another packed console room here full of voices and faces that you may recognize, you may know. And here they all are. Hello, everybody. Hello. I've got Gary here. We've got John Yulden too. And as well. Hello. Filling up the console room for a casual chat here on Type 40 Extra. Good to see you all. Good to see you all. So, yes. Yeah. On. Uh, you've sort of preempted already a preemptive strike. I've been all over social media today and I've seen lots of sort of, I don't want to use the word smug, but I'm going to anyway. Lots of smug <laughs> stuff is of people holding blue ray box sets as, oh, the posties come, this, that, and the other. There they all are. And I thought, John, I've just been and checked my emails now, my Amazon account, and my season 15 box set doesn't get here till Saturday, which is a little, I suppose you could say, but I did, I order it, I ordered it within like 10 minutes of it being on sale. Yeah. It's not coming until Saturday, and I don't mind. Am I the only person who doesn't mind these coming when they come? <laughs> well, you, you can just do a full session on Saturday with it, can't you? You know, do the whole thing. Great. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, mine's the same. I ordered off Amazon. Yeah, I've been looking every day. I'm like, it's not changed at all. It's not fair. But yeah, actually, yeah, weekend's going to be the time that I've got time just to devote to watching it. I've spoken to a few people today, actually, who've ordered from Amazon and it said Saturday. And then a couple of them have had alerts today to basically say, oh, I'll be with you tomorrow. Wow. So, there you, go. you know, you never know. Maybe that's a new tactic so yeah. to, 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 to sort of let you down and then bring you back up again. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? So this is the 15th box set, Gary. Have you been keeping count as, as you fill up your shelf? Because I know that you import these as well, don't you? I am so looking forward to this. I just checked this morning. Uh, there was no movement over the weekend, and today they say it's supposed to be here on Friday. No movement over the weekend. You can get some tablets for that. They just well, all... <laughs> and it's funny that that um, you know you go on different forums and stuff, and you see that uh, anybody who doesn't have it yet, there's like they're in complete meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> in just, terms of, I'm never ordering off. Fill in the blank again. I'm done. I'm done. You know, and so yeah, quite, enter like, quite entertaining. You kind of can try and console them and go, "It's all right. Just go back and watch, watch season twenty again." Shut up! Shut up! Twenty's <laughs> <laughs> in the past. <laughs> and then, so yeah, the Australians remind you that they haven't had the last three releases yeah. yet, and, yeah. and then we feel terrible, feel terrible for them. Season fifteen, all those new discs, all that fabulous new artwork from Lee Binding, it does look as sumptuous yeah. as ever. And of course, yeah. this came with that fabulous new teaser trailer, didn't didn't it, with uh, Louise Jameson back yeah. as Leela, that was unforgettable. And then the announcement very soon after that that was your lot. We're not doing those anymore. <laughs> 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 on that one. And I think I just like to talk about a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. to keep us waiting, don't they? Which of the stories are you looking forward to seeing the most then, Sarah, when, when that set does arrive? Uh, I want to see Horror Fang Rock with the new effects, but I'm gonna I'm gonna watch both versions. I like that there's both versions on. I, I wouldn't want, you know, the At new At the same one time, like Grand yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have one, I'm gonna have one on one. <laughs> um, <laughs> All of them. I'm, I'm fond of all of them, really. There's not really. Yeah. Um, so, well, I suppose I'm not in a particular hurry to watch Underworld, <clears throat> but it's not. It's not awful. It's none of none of them. You know, a subpar on on this one. It's a strong set. Um, and obviously, all the extras. I mean, oh god, there's again. I've got about six months of uh, <laughs> in there to <laughs> get my teeth into, really. I'm like Sarah. I'll probably watch Horror Fang Rock first, but I am really, really looking forward to that 90-minute uh, documentary about Graham Williams. Yeah, uh, that's supposed to be really, really good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one and the uh, conversation Matthew Sweet with Louise as well. You know, they're always yeah. Really yeah. Good. yeah he's a very uh, disarming interviewer, I think, Matthew Sweet. I mean, he's a bit of a creep. Sorry, Matthew, yeah. but go on, he is yeah. a little bit of a creep. But he is he is very good at it. I th I think he's I, I think it's kind of the right approach. It's a little bit pebble mill, 
Yeah. Uh, and then at times it sort of drifts into the kind of late show style interview, which I think is probably probably all right for these uh, for these candidates. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like someone interviewing Trump, is it? Where you're going to get them no. riled and freak no. them out. You know, it's got to be a nice, relaxed conversation. No, no I, I can't imagine John Leeson ever losing his s and <laughs> sla- snapping no. a folding chair over Matthew Sweet's head somehow. No, I think no. That's pretty unlikely. <laughs> <Canine voice>. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, a season 15 making its way to you, maybe. I don't know. Perhaps you've got it already. Let us know in the comments section. Share your experience about it about it all uh, yeah we're in uh, acacia avenue in newport wales here the tarnis has got its scarf on i've i've still got my woolly hats on everybody I'm, I'm waiting for spring to properly arrive gary what's it like where you are um it's actually i'm sorry to say it's actually really kind of nice today kind of uh comes nice. out not too hot um you know typical california weather i'm actually looking forward to the weather getting better where you are because i'm looking forward to seeing all the stuff that you find on uh, the in the car boot sales like <laughs> yes th- there was actually supposed to be one at the weekend and it was rained off at the last minute john i was a little bit gutted there we are it, you know we need them they're important they, they certainly are to me i picked up some great doctor who bargains last year i, I have to say so it's the season for car boot sales, and it's the season for uh, cringy uh, celebs asking you to uh, dive into your pocket for which whichever cause that they see fit. I'd forgotten that they'd made Comic Relief an annual thing now, Sarah. So when they said it was Comic Relief again last week, I thought, really? I'm sure there was one last year, mm-hmm. because I know the 14th Doctor was in some sort of skit. And they used to do this every two years, didn't they? But no, it is. Yeah. It's, it's an annual. It's an annual thing now. And and uh, David Tennant was a, was there again, again this year with Lenny Henry. It's Lenny Henry's last stint hosting this after well over thirty years. And there's Tennant in the sharp suit, as ever, lined up with uh, a bunch of other nobodies. But you know, they, <laughs> I didn't watch any. I didn't watch any of this. Did anybody catch any of it? No. I, I forgot it was on. Um... I think they've yeah. just got to take comic out of it now and just call it relief, haven't they, really? You know? It's a relief when it's over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. Oh, it's not been funny for a good few years now. Yeah. What do you think about uh, about uh, Tenant's ensemble there? It's very third Doctor, isn't it? Yeah, oh, God, I like the suit, yeah. Well, I was just looking Definitely at Lenny gone. Henry's gr- Lenny Henry's green velvet suit and thinking how third Doctor that was. Mm-hmm. I think he looks very dashing. But uh, I think David Tennant looks like he's um, he just needs the sort of the tilted hat. He looks like he, sh- he should be sort of uh, serving ice creams in a cinema somewhere or at a big old <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I, I I'm very interested in the girl to the right of yeah. Lenny Henry. Hello, she is absolutely gorgeous. I'll have to find out who she is. But yeah, yeah. I didn't see. I know. Look at those heels. Those heels are like what eight inches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm working my way down out. to the heels. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, work your way down to the heels, Dan. If they're about like eight inches. <laughs> I better take this picture off before I go blind. Yeah, so, so that was comic relief. That was comic relief. Nice. I'm only four it was. Whatever. It take me four hours to climb up. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Apparently there was Doctor Who content, but I didn't see I didn't see any of this talked about or tweeted about or anything. You had to look really close to find it. So get a load of this, Sarah. It was in the background yeah. shots of whatever dopey skit this was, Lenny Henry was doing again. So we got a, a poster of Shooty Gatwa at the top. I mean, all, all you need to really know there is that Richard Maidley's in it. You think, well, that's not going to be funny. And, no. <laughs> and you've got the police box itself behind Lenny and a big toy of Bluey. A Bluey and Doctor Who crossover. That would be that would be absolutely brilliant for me. I'm, I'd be totally down for that. Oh, so, yeah, well, I love some blue, Bluey in the blue box. Yeah, I'm all for that. I think they should yeah. make that instead. Yeah. So anybody sorry that they missed it yet? <laughs> Lenny I'm, I'm Henry hasn't I'm been funny it, since be since the mid nineties, has he? He's part Hobbit, uh, some of the year, as I understand it now. And uh, yes, yeah, so I've got. A, I used to have quite a lot of time for Lenny Henry. Obviously, from just up the road from me, I've I've met him a couple of times. Bumped into him, literally bumped into the guy in the shops. And he's a nice enough fella, but he's said some quite contentious things lately, has Lenny. And I know that he's not as popular as he once was. I think he, he kind of went back to making people laugh. It would probably go, go down a little bit better, John. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, those those early era of Lenny Henry and when he used to do his Doctor Who bit as well, it was great, wasn't it? And because somebody else co- famous for sort of doing their kind of Doctor Who bit was uh, was this person. And uh, yes, once again, the uh, insufferable Jodie Whittaker was over on Channel Four. She was part of <laughs> she was part of Celebrity British Bake Off there. So twenty celebs tried their hands and their uh, whisks and rolling pins and things, and impressing that poor Hollywood bloke, the the uh, the Silver Fox fella, and Prue Leith with their baking prowess. And as you can see, things went about as well for Miss Whitaker as they did when she was aboard the TARDIS there. <laughs> she looks somewhat out of her depth again, Sarah. Would well, you believe it? Yes, yeah, she does. But I, uh, now, she has my sympathy on this because baking can be so stressful and to have cameras... Around you. And then somebody talking to you, and it's all going wrong. It, so yeah, I do. My heart goes okay. out for a little bit. Sarah, you're a great, you're a great baker. You're always making those great cookies. Uh, you know, all the great like doctors. Yeah, but you only, yeah, but you only see it when it goes right, though, girl. You don't see it when it goes wrong. <laughs> I know that picture looks like uh, her cake just exploded or something. Yeah. That that picture actually yeah. looks like her facial expression when Chibnall called her to tell her she's got another series. <laughs> uh, apparently somebody called spencer matthews won I, this, of course this is celeb- a celebrity thing on on mainstream television so i've no idea who any of them are but a bloke called spencer matthews won i understand he's on the far left uh, jody whittaker fans though have done uh, precisely what they always always do best and they've completely lost their shit across social media because she didn't win completely fitting (laughs) completely fitting for a charitable endeavor like this of course good good losers aren't they gary is this a show like survivor where everybody starts and then they just kind of like cut it down gradually yeah yeah yeah, they i think they start with 20 of them there's five shows over a week in the run-up to the telethon and they whittle them down and they gradually drive them all slightly nuts there's paloma of faith Stood next to Jodie Whittaker, looking. Uh, yeah, she looks. I say she looks quite hot. I do quite like Palana Faith. But what is that? Uh, yeah. What is that she's wearing there? It looks like uh, she got. She shops at the same store that Shooty does. I think you know. For, <laughs> for, for, for yeah, the I, think it, I think it's the same thing. They've just well, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Off she rattle on for yeah. a minute. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> she's got the offcuts, John. That's what it is. <laughs> the offcuts. A good time was sort of had by all. Look, any chance I get to see Jodie Whittaker make in a fool of herself yet again. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely fine, fine by me. Of course, uh, the links to donate to Comic Relief, should you wish to, they'll be in the description to this video too. And at least it's not so quite painful this time when it's not our show. She's messing up everybody. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I wanted to speak to the both of you in particular, gentlemen, is because it's been a while since we, we talked about collectibles and merchandise and publishing and all that kind of thing. And both you guys are discerning collectors, aren't you? You don't, you don't buy absolutely everything, do you, John? You've got a couple of lines of merchandise that you follow and different yeah. things make your radar. That's the impression I get. Yeah, definitely. Um, the last few years, as I've said before, it's been mainly the collection um, mm-hmm. and the classic, you know, comic book collections I've been I've been purchasing. But it is comics generally. You do you are a comics guy aside from Doctor yeah. Who, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I'm I'm in weekly in my local comic book store, picking up you know the latest you you runs, you know, of my my subscription. So it's great. And obviously, anything that I order Doctor Who wise comes from there anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I stopped. I was I, I was reading the Titan collection for a few years, but I stopped after a while because it just it petered out, didn't it? Really, Doctor yeah. Who, just like on the television, Gary in comics, it's had its peaks and troughs, hasn't it? Hasn't it? It did. I mean, um, you know, throughout the um, you know Capaldi era, okay. uh, there was about maybe like you know four years where there was like you know four to five ongoing simultaneous titles. I mean. Every week, you could get at least one, and then yeah. uh, you know, with the arrival of Jody, uh, the sales ended up just plummeting into where now you know you may get an occasional single issue mm. here and there. And it looks like every time they try and restart it, like even for the anniversary, there was very, very little, wasn't it? there? Was there was a series about Missy the year before? It's been gradually staggering to an absolute 
dead stop, Sarah. This whole comic book line just as it was very, very healthy for a, a long time. Multiple doctors, multiple series, and some really exciting creatives too. People who um, weren't just sort of Doctor Who people who go from audio drama to books and to this to that and the mm. other. You know, the names that do tend to pop up like Paul Mars and Gary Russell, all great writers who are kind of jacks of all trades. And gentlemen, I don't mean that to sound dismissive, but who turn their hands to things. Genuine comics icons mm. like Andy Diggle, if you remember, Gary, used to write for Doctor Who when it was mm. at IDW and, and when it first right. was Titan. There was pe- people like that were, were going of that quality then. But it's gradually sort of, it's gradually all sort of ebbed away. And it's completely down to the failure of the uh, Jodie Whittaker era. But it, it may, it may be restarting. They're going to have another stab at it on free okay. comic book day. This happens every single year. We can go into your local comic book store and you can pick up kind of tester books, can't you, for a multitude of titles across the big two. There we are. There we are, some previous editions. The only reason anybody... Yeah, they, uh, in case they, anybody you're not selling me on these guys. In case, in case anybody thinks that I've lost it, the operative word here is free. <laughs> Stop it, Gary. They're, like, they're coming through the screen at me. <laughs> free, yeah, free comic book day. So it, it is that simple, isn't it, Gary? You walk in there and yeah. there they all are. And you can literally, you can take pretty much as much. You can't take like too many multiples of things, can you? But what's the principle? Well, I mean, you, know, you can't really take multiples of a title, but there's usually anywhere from like 30 to 40 different titles because every company from the majors to the, the small independents have it. And usually, like you said, Dan, they're kind of samplers. They might be the right have like a standalone story that introduces an upcoming story, or they might reprint, you know, one of their better stories from the year to kind of like introduce new readers to it. And you can come in and you can get, I mean, some of the stores, uh, you know, some limited to like, you can get two or three of your choice, but then, there's always like a lot left over. So if you come back like the next day, you can kind of dig at your pick of, of a lot more. I would say as well, certainly go in, you know, if you've never tried comic books before, I mean, comic book retailers and stores, they're, they're having a hard time of it at the moment. Mm-hmm. So go in there, pick up a few samples, you know, and it's what I did when I first got into comic books. I went in and next thing you know, it took off from there, really. I found something I loved and, you know, hopefully... A lot of people watching this might go, you know, I'll pop down at the weekend and when it's on and, and, and have a look. There's, there's so much. I, mean, I wouldn't know where to begin, you know, just all of the stuff with Marvel and DC, let alone Doctor Who and any other, you know, property. And um, it's not... It's yeah. not inexpensive either, as it said. When you yeah. when you look, when you go in there and you see them, and even if something does catch your eye, mm-hmm. you have to look and see what price it is converted from dollars to pounds. Yeah. And it's always slightly more than you think it's worth. You think, well, yeah. I'd like it, but do I want it four and a half quid's worth? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how I feel about it. Yeah. And it's as John says, it's great advertisement for the comic stores because yeah. most of the free comic book stores, as you can tell, have this blank space here. And usually the comic store themselves put their own stamps or something right there. So it's kind of like okay. advertisement for that store, uh, you know, when they take the book and the, the idea is to kind of come back to that store. But this year, if you go in on May the 4th, 2024, your eyes will be met with this site, Mr. Shooter Gatwa as the 15th Doctor on the front cover of this new edition, the 2024 edition, Free Comic Book Day, BBC, Doctor Who, the 15th Doctor faces a fearsome new threat. <gasps> is it, it Trousers? Declared. <laughs> yes, the trousers. Oh, can you imagine? Yeah, somebody's taking him to Primark and rather than some designer out- outlet. Yeah, and it, uh, it goes on to say in the little blurb here meets the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday in June with writers Waters and Ramsey. Uh, catch the Doctor revisiting past incarnations in exciting new Doctor Who tales. Explore the Doctor's fears at Earth's end. Uh, <laughs> Earth's End, really? Ahead of the BBC series with Shooty Gatwa. So that's what the official thing thing says there. So a striking image there. We've seen it plenty of places before. But so it, is this the actual cover? This is the actual yeah. cover. That's a bit it will be. They're, that generally, it... they're generally like yeah. simplistic. Like even these are just yeah. photos, you know, basically. They're pretty much like okay. straight. But and it, if you notice... be, it'd be nice to have seen the, a different image. 
Well, if you notice on the front as well, just as Gary uh, dis- uh, demonstrated there, it's got an area for the white block. Yeah. Certainly on the left hand side, and whatever was on the right hand side, which would be a barcode or something, Gary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Normally, uh, like on on these ones, something it's like what I call the Titan. But we can actually have a cheeky look inside because the thing with modern comics, I find, is that the interior is never as good as the exterior. Sarah, we've not been wowed by that cover because we've seen it all before. But here's a look at some of the interior art there. So this is when you open it up. This is what what you're met with. The artist is Kelsey Ramsey. And the writer is Dan Waters. And here we've got uh, a, a two-page spread. We see the 15th Doctor and Ruby there in the TARDIS. The TARDIS is being sort of bounced around. And there's this sort of yellow vapour, which is outside of the TARDIS and seems to manage to get in and make a nuisance of itself. It's a bit like something out of a Bisto gravy advert. <laughs> I, I, for a second, I thought it was that toilet roll from Jeremy Whitaker's first story. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the, the rags the thing. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the chamois class, yeah. 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 Of course, the, the trick with licensed comics based on, on movies and TV shows and things like that tends to be the likenesses. I think if you can if you can convince people that you're looking at the characters that you've come to know and love on the television, then you're kind of halfway there, really, if you feel like it's ex- an extension of the show. It's hard to judge when, when we've only had one episode of this all new era though isn't it sarah but as somebody who doesn't read comics who who isn't in and out of the comic book store the way that the rest of us are what what are your first thoughts of this just as, as a doctor who fan is it yeah, he, it looks really pretty and yeah there's definitely a good likeness and shooter um i'm not sure about Ru- mate i can't really see ruby that clearly to no. get a good look at her. but yeah uh, the 15th doctor uh definitely looks good it's uh, oh yeah okay it's not get a bit close and you yeah, can it see does, yeah. does. Uh, the console looks good uh, yeah yeah I think it looks uh, looks pretty close it's not it's not really tempting me um, but I think if you were interested in this era and if you did like the church on Ruby Road I think there's enough in here that would maybe tempt you I like how stylized it is John mm-hmm. I I know that. Different artists obviously have their own have their own styles, but one thing that puts me off a lot of current comic books is that I open them up and I see very similar styles of artwork, which are very very minimal and minimal and not very distinctive. This seems to have a bit of attitude and a bit of the kind of a bit of the fairy tale about it. I was quite surprised when I saw these pages, John. What put your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I quite like it. Uh, I, the first thing that when I always open a comic comic book is right what's the artwork like the artwork mm-hmm. draws me in then the second thing obviously is story you know how, mm-hmm. what's the writing like so it, it looks good but the one thing I would say with Titan the last few years is and you know I don't know if you guys know has the license come to an end is it almost at an end or has it, it has been to be. yeah because I, I just the stories in the history of comic books for Doctor Who, there's been great stories and great writing. And I think the last few years, it just hasn't hasn't been anywhere near that kind of level. And and I would love it to pick up and get back to, to where we were. There was a, a really nice hardback at the end of last year written by Dan Slott with art by Christopher Jones. You know, we had Christopher Jones on the mm-hmm. podcast to talk about it. It's, it's a fabulous edition, but that's obviously mm-hmm. a hardback, hardback book, isn't it? There, oh, Gary's. Let's get it up on the screen so people can yeah. see. See, Christopher, we're still, we're still flogging it. Yeah. <laughs> Once upon a time, Lord, they're still available, and I love that. I really, really did. It's a cut above anything else they've done in a long, long time. Yeah, with two of my uh, favorite artists, Christopher Jones, who I just think is amazing. I saw him at a convention. It's like, mm-hmm. please autograph this picture um and then matthew dow smith who uh did a lot of the uh 10th doctor i mean 11th doctor run who's a little bit more stylized kind of closer to the type of art we're seeing here Mm. i think dan you said it was stylized kind of like matthew dow smith it doesn't go the artists tend to either go kind of like realistic to where you almost feel like you're watching uh you know a screen kind of like christopher jones versus the more kind of surreal went from at one point where there were simultaneous ongoing monthly uh, 10th, 11th and 12th doctor ones. There was always uh, a past doctor miniseries going at the same time. 
so there was like four titles then. And then when Jody started, uh, they all kind of winnowed. Normally the way it would work, uh, Sarah, is that they would run it for a year and then we'd get renewed for a second okay. like season of mm -hmm. like 12 issues. And after the first Jody run of 12, what they did was, I guess because of sales, they started bringing her back in like four issue miniseries, but it was always co-starring the 10th Doctor. It was always, <laughs> yes. her, it was always, yes, I, I remember, I remember seeing always, it, yeah. you know, they realized that her by herself wasn't selling. So they teamed her up with more popular doctors. The, the uh, legacy of the show does seem to be uh, running through these preview pages for the new free comic book day edition. I, I'm particularly drawn uh, to the middle panel of the second page there on the right with the remnants of a Dalek Scaro, where the doctor watched in horror as the Daleks were born. And you can just see the rat, the, um, you could just see the Dalek baubles, the exterminator, and the yeah, sucker yeah. there out of out of the wreckage. Yeah, and yeah. it's only when you look closely you see that that's a very nice representation of that original Scaro City model from all the way back in the in the Dead Planet, the Daleks. So I think I, I appreciate that. I am sort of sort of feeling this, and it does tap in to some elements from previous yeah. Doctor Who stories too. You recognise some of the other stuff? I do. Yeah, that, that's even now. This is the. Uh much more interesting now i'm i'm starting to feel it a bit more uh, because i can recognize these past things and they, they look really beautiful as well There's some really good uh, drawings here yeah i no, think nice i think i think with this it, you know it, it's good what they're trying to do because they're clearly trying to engage with people that mm -hmm. maybe probably haven't watched doctor who before and saying oh right you know this is just a quick jumping on point of mm -hmm previous stories that's very very good um I, I just really hope it's sort of they really do build on it you know once mm -hmm. they go to the actual run um because like sarah was saying when i'm seeing things like that i'm like for a free comic book day i'm like yep i'm grabbing that yep. you know that's that that is right up my street um but i just want more of it because i'm greedy <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's the fact that it's imagery that we recognise, rep representations of stories that we liked and moments in the Doctor's history uh, recaptured like that. And the way that, that uh, the 15th Doctor's illustrated there with these sort of pursed lips and staring into the middle distance and other places we dare not look, the Doctor's very darkest days of all. Because yeah, we haven't seen this side really to the, to the brand new Doctor on screen yet, have we? So... I think that's part of why I'm so attracted by this, but it wasn't what I was expecting at, at all. I mean, if normally to answer um, uh, your question before is like most of the um, uh, most times, like new stories that show up in the free comic, the issues are generally like from 12 to 16 pages. And then they fill it out with kind of like, like original showing like the original line drawing, you know, to kind of compare just like mm -hmm. filler pages like that. But usually the story is like 12 to 16 pages. Now I read the, um, uh, the dialogue between the doctor and, uh, uh, Ruby on the first two pages. And it was really obvious to me that the intent is kind of matching, uh, the whole like season one nomenclature is it seems like this is really designed to maybe introduce the character to people who've never um who haven't seen it uh, who haven't seen the show because they talk a lot about oh you know where's the TARDIS going now it's like oh we're deep inside the space-time continuum and it's not simplistic but it is something that you could see maybe could fit any number of doctors yeah. because it's kind of going through yeah. Uh, generic like doctor who establishing yeah and i get it i get it because they want this to kind of play off a series which is intended to kind of reach a different audience well, yeah because if, if it's too complicated it's just gonna put people off yeah but obviously the, the, the idea is to get as many new new eyes on this as possible yeah. for this and obviously on the show as it goes on People who last saw Doctor Who when, when Capaldi or Matt Smith were playing it, or or maybe people who bought the original comics mm -hmm. way, way back. And it's that reassurance that it's it's basically the same. It's the, mm -hmm. the the man, the girl, the blue box, time and space, 
off into yeah. into adventure. I yeah, I think that's pretty steady stuff. So I, I am looking forward to picking this up. I mean, I have been very damning of Titan's line in the past. I do think they've been asleep at the wheel with this brand. You can see the, that they have had no real incentive to do anything creative with it because what was on television was awful. It wasn't supporting their license. Mm-hmm. I'm sensing there could be fresh wind in the sails here, John. I, at least that's what I'm hoping. You know, when I when I pick this up, obviously I'll know whether it's going to be worth yeah. four pounds of my money every month for however long they manage to run it again. Shame, and look, we all want it to work, don't we? We we all want a great Doctor Who comic comic book to read, to pick up regularly at the comic book store, and for it to be a success. And I really hope that is the case because. It's one. It's one of the perfect mediums for comic books. It really is. It just there's so many. It's li- like the show. It's there's it limitless so well. stories you can do, and it mm-hmm. and you know that original. I remember when the first Titan Run was announced because I don't know if you remember, but they were only going to do it for the US at one point, and I don't remember that. Yeah, and I was trying to get my local comic book guy to see if he could sneak some in from the US but they were saying due to licensing issues they couldn't get it in the UK and then suddenly that um, changed um, I wish I'd have known it. that I would have made a fortune on yeah, you would have <laughs> 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 I, to, I, would have, I would have given you three. Everyone. I would have given you three a slight discount, though. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I used to get the IDW stuff, and they were a bit of a trial to get. But with, with the Titan stuff, there were so many titles, I seriously couldn't keep up. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I stopped after the first few issues of the Capaldi ones. I stopped buying them with the intent on buying the trade paperbacks, which I bought a couple of. Uh, and by that time, I just couldn't keep track of what was what. Yeah. I've always meant to go back and get the rest, Sarah, but it's... <laughs> you won't get, life gets in the way, yeah. yeah. It, it does. And, and also that I used to have a... And this this went across multiple different expanded media lines. Once the Whitaker era started, my incentive to keep up with it all, everything but DWM, largely dropped. It well, completely it, killed my, my yeah. obsessive gene. Yeah. If you get out of the habit as well, and that could be comic books, novels, or you know whatever, what you know, not watching the show, it's very difficult to then, you know, get back into it. Dan, you know, if you want to go back and complete your your uh, Titan run, they do actually publish what I think is a very helpful a reader's guide. Now, bear in mind these are all collections. These are all the collections. Okay. So you have like the thirteenth, the twelfth, yeah. the eleventh. Mm-hmm. And so every one of these is a collection of however many, five, six individual ones. So these are all the ones, Dan, that you need to get if you want to. Uh, That's actually really your, handy. And did you uh, say it is, Honestly, it is. It's Reader's Guide. So where, where is that? Is that in the back this of This is actually in, it's in this. And I think even in, um, let me check. I think even, in, and of course it's updated, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I think in the, this is the last free, and and it totally makes sense they put this in the free comic book day because they yeah. want to direct people. You yeah, know, yeah. To it. But, um, you know, they they have uh, 13, 12, 11, 10th, 9th. There's some of the classic doctors, which, and these are, I think, some of the best ones they did, which is the. See, classic, I, I like would happily point. work my way through a list yeah. of all of those, skipping out all of the 13th doctor stuff, obviously. Yeah. Don't, take things, don't take things to extremes. So. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> It does. I mean, like I said, this is like a one-stop, your one-stop thing you want to kind of have with you as you decide, yeah. as you work your way through it. I'll probably get, I'll probably make a note of that. Go, I'll go through and write it all out mm-hmm. and put a little sort of tick. I'll carry around a piece of paper with me like I used I know, to do when I was do, collecting. We do, we do like a good <laughs> list. Come on, Doctor. You know well, like geeks anyway, just any kind of genre film. We That's love a right. list. There's, there's a parallel universe, Gary, somewhere right now, who has sold a fortune of Titan Comics. Oh, yeah, <laughs> here right now with gold jewelry on, looking like yeah. Mr. T. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have all Shooty's rings on me. Yeah, and a big medallion. <laughs> yeah, and a butler behind him. Yeah. yeah, you think Doctor American Doctor Who comics have a street value? Who would have thought it? So get the uh, free comic book day edition of Titan Comics Doctor Who. That is 
in your comic book store on May the 4th. Some of these do turn up on eBay as well. Obviously, they can't be free on eBay because people charge for postage and whatever, but you should be able to get them in your local comic book store there and sample it, the artwork and the writing, and, and see what you think. Maybe they'll convert you into a comic book reader as well. Um, we spoke a little moment ago about habits, you know, and even though I got out of the habit of buying the new stuff, the old stuff was still something that I could rely on. And uh, the older Doctor Who comics that we've spoken about this before as well, I own many of them multiple different times in different editions. And you and I, Gary, have spoken before, haven't we, about that enormous Cybermen collection that Panini put out last August, September time, that big, thick comic collection, all in black and white, beautifully presented. That's the the one. Look how thick this is. Wow. This is every Cyberman story that was published in Doctor Who magazine from almost the first issue uh, to like the the Paul McGann epic that rounded out his era. You know, so they've done that. They've even oh. done. Uh, they even did the same thing in two volumes for. Yeah. Wow. The Daleks. So beautifully, beautifully done. And uh, not long ago, if you remember, John, we had you on to talk about that colossal compendium of the fourth Doctor stories, didn't we, from Doctor Who Weekly? Do you remember? Yeah, it's um, it's it's brilliant, and you know, just having the Star Beast in it and the Iron Legion, and you know, if anybody wants to have some good Doctor Who in their lives and they've never tried it, then by all means, give that a try because it is. It is brilliant. There's some great stories in there. Me and Gary have talked before about it as well. And, uh, you know, the again, the Iron Legion is is up there as a, a, a top comic book from, from some fa- fantastic writers and artists, you know. But it's the Star Beast for me. Just mm-hmm. if that was just in there by itself, I would have been yeah. buying it. You know, it's just yeah. that gets me every single time i'll probably have about 400 copies at one point by the time I exactly the each of them are classics. <laughs> yeah. most of them need no introduction and i've yeah. seen both the cybermen title and this fourth doctor anthology out in the wild now they've got them at hmv in places like that so we yeah. can find them but it's about to be added to with with this new upcoming title it's called doctor who the return of the daleks the complete yeah. doctor who backup tales volume one where we can discover timeless tales of the Daleks, Cybermen, Silurians, and many more in this brand new collection from Panini Comics. So if your wallets have recovered, everybody, we have this one on the starting grid as well. So it says, yeah, obviously, Volume 1, the complete Doctor Who backup tales. Where where are they, where do these come from then, Gary? I, I suspect you recognise some of the artwork on this cover immediately. I do. Um, well, uh, when for the first 44 issues, it was Doctor Who Weekly before it became a monthly. And every issue featured the main story, uh, like or a chapter of the main story, whether it was the Star Beast or the Iron Legion or whatever. And then there was always a four page kind of backup strip, which was introduced by the doctor, which is basically just one panel of Tom Baker's head going, oh, you remember my enemies, the Dalek. <laughs> and it doesn't feature the doctor, but it features just the, vil- just the villains doing their own thing, whether it's Ice Warriors or Cybermen or Santarans or Sea Devils. And it was like four pages. And normally they were like maybe two or three parts or whatever. But um, it was always really interesting art. David Lloyd, who then went on to do like V for Vendetta and and a lot of other stuff. Um, And a lot lot of these are darker. They're not the kind of like season 17 bright, shiny doctor. A lot of these have really dark, endings um uh the four they wouldn't be out of, they wouldn't be out of place in titles like well never mind never mind 2018 something like warrior but they oh, absolutely yeah. and and the one you chose to show there dan um the 4d war sarah by the way alan moore who then was you know very famous who went on to write Watchmen mm-hmm. and yeah. and all of that but these were his early days and he wrote i think it was like a three or four story arc which was basically the time war decades before we knew of the time oh, okay. war but it was kind of his version of yeah. a time war so um a lot of great writers and artists do this i'm 
actually kind of surprised that they have the rights, I guess, to the Alan Moore stuff because normally he's kind of, you know, fidgety <laughs> about it. It's difficult. Difficult, I think. <laughs> Paul Neary passed away three or four weeks ago, didn't he? And and he was the artist on the strip on the right, Canine's Finest Hour there, which is, that was a little sort of one-off thing, wasn't it? Yeah, it shows what Canine gets up to uh, when the doctor's not looking. It, it, it feels like the universe before the universe was a thing, that you have all these spin-offs. <laughs> Yeah, it's world building, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's exactly. uh, universe building. Um, um, yeah, and yeah, I can see how it, you know, it would prove popular with fans. And yeah, just this artwork's gorgeous. I mean, that just that panel alone of the fourth Doctor, it's so detailed. I mean, the K nine story I remember, I haven't read in a long while, is not one of the really dark, dark ones. But some of the dark ones almost kind of have this feel of, uh, you know, like the Black Mirror version of Doctor Who. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, with some of these, like the Cybermen on this planet where there's this manifestation of death who's, you know, killing all the Cybermen or, um, you know, I mean, it, a, a lot of different tones to the mm -hmm. story, right? Right, John? I mean, they, they're kind yeah. of all over the place. Uh, definitely. And, and I was going to say as well, you know, if there are people out there that are a bit disillusioned with the TV show at the moment, this just shows again that is such a vast history of fantastic stories out there in other mediums that you can mm -hmm. you can dip into and you will love them and they will keep you going for you know goodness knows how long but for me it's again and again and again because I never get tired of them so so and John yeah. looking at what Sarah's just said too for any, you know, we may get sort of a little dismissive, not just of the TV show, but when we see flashy graphics saying the Hooniverse and all yeah. the, and does this really need expanding Doctor Who? Doctor Who won't work like that. Well, just as Sarah says, it, this is kind of proof of concept, doesn't it? That the, yeah. the Hooniverse is bigger and broader than the Doctor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, it uh, as you're saying there, you know, it, it shows, and Sarah's right, because it shows, you know, what's going on in the universe when the doctor's not there to, you know, pop in and save everything, you know, it's, it, it's great. And you just, you never get tired of this writing and this, this artwork, you know, it's just, just that, you know, that panel there with the Dalek, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And, um, you know, it, as soon as I saw this pop up, I pre-ordered it, you know, I had that, you know, it's like <laughs> you want to hit that pre-order quick button and beat someone else to it before it sells out. You know, that was me. <laughs> as soon as I, actually, I didn't even really know this was a thing until Dan says, oh, by the way, I think I'm going to cover this one too. And I'm like, what? What is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, it, there it goes another pre-order for me. You know, so. I got lucky. It just popped up on Amazon. And, it goes, and I thought, oh. is this There's, for example, there's a really good, it probably won't be in, in, until volume two, because uh, the backup strips really only lasted until I think issue yeah. 60 or 61 and then there was a couple of like two or three or four thereafter so uh one of the ones that probably won't pop up until volume two i think was a two-parter but imagine the 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 uh the movie the thing like the john carpenter movie the thing mm -hmm. but with zygons oh nice yeah that was one of the remember that one Dan or John, yeah. I there's a cliffhanger, the isn't there? As well, yeah. there's a cliffhanger to the first yeah. part, it's like a full yeah. splash page right. of a side gun sort of bursting through a door. It's beautifully yeah. done, yeah. too. So, what you that do, was Sarah, one of the more memorable ones. <laughs> what you do, Sarah, you order it, you turn your lights off, you get your torch out, yeah, like you did as a kid, and you read it <laughs> <laughs> under what the you do. covers. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 exactly, you do it, it's compulsory. <laughs> uh, just, just like the Star Beast and Beep the Meep, a lot of fans are very fond of the character Absalom Dark, the Dalek Killer. This mm -hmm. is probably still the, the most lamented of all of those backup strips. This has been reprinted as well several times in uh, summer specials back in the early to mid-80s and then again in a dedicated graphic novel too in the late 80s as well. So yeah. these have all been out before several times, but it never loses its its novelty Mm -hmm. Somehow, does it, Gary? That's the one. Yes. What? It's a gorgeous cover. Yeah. He's basically, Absolutely Sarah beautiful. is uh, a guy who hates Daleks. He has a chainsaw, which is his weapon of choice that he uses oh, yeah. to go yeah. kill the Daleks. 
<laughs> and that's uh, that's the work of Steve Moore, Steve Dillon, yeah. David Lloyd, all all these fabulous artists who contributed to just those those strips alone. And yeah, just like you guys, I kind of can't wait to get hold of this again. And to be honest, too, because several of them have been reprinted on their own as well, Sarah, in the mm -hmm. American title or mm -hmm. squeezed in here and there. But the, the idea of having them all there where you can sort of dip into them. You, you may have joked about it there, John. The idea that you could read one of these before bed yeah. it's, it's almost like a bedtime story. I, I completely yeah. get that, specifically with these. Yeah, 100%. And jumping back to what we were talking about, Titan, I was never more excited in my life when the 11th Doctor run, they brought him back, you know. Oh, you remember dark, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, did, yeah. It's just, it was just the 11th brilliant. Doctor, wasn't it? Yeah, 11th Doctor, yeah. And oh, it, was, cool. it was great. I, I hate to bring it up, but, you know, instead of this Doomsday thing, why didn't they use that character instead? That sounds very assassinated to me. So, and that would tie in with the 60th anniversary, the comic side. Yeah. It would have been amazing to have to have Absalom Dark, Dalek Killer in some sort of dedicated multimedia event. The trouble, the trouble you've got with that as well is where they did the bit with Doom where she's talking, you know, the, the small skit she did, you know, talking at I'm Doom. If you did that with him, you probably have to get Jason Momoa to do it. <laughs> if they'd have done Absalom Dark, and yeah, they wouldn't have gone with Jason Momoa. They'd have no. gone for Jason Manford or somebody like that yeah. instead. <laughs> it would have been very, very low. It. Yes, it's available to pre-order right now. It's published on the 6th of July, price 19 .99. A bit of a bargain, I think. As yes, it oh, says absolutely. blurb, these backup tales taken from the early days of Doctor Who Weekly are a highly sought after and much loved slice of Doctor Who comic book history. And they're now back in print for the first time in decades. And it says that uh, featuring the work of British comic book legends Steve Moore and David Lloyd, each strip has been digitized. Each strip has been digitally restored to the highest quality, oh, wow. ensuring that these wow. thrilling stories can be enjoyed at their absolute best. I can't wait if that's when does this come out? Because I'm pre-ordering it, it. The sixth of July, Gary. Go on, pull, oh. the trigger, pull the trigger, mate. Pull the trigger. Yeah. Oh, you bet I am. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous, fabulous stuff. Oh my God, I'm a big fan. Thank you. Just. All right, good to see you. Come on, man. Nice to meet you, mate. <laughs> All the best. Take care. That's Doctor Who. I just met Doctor Who. Stop playing with me, bro. This is the type of places we be at. We meet Doctor Who. What are you doing? What are we doing? Well, Gary's just pre-ordered this, The Return of the Daleks. That's the first volume of these classic backup strips there from the early days of Doctor Who Weekly. And, yeah, we're just checking our bank accounts now to see if we can we can all manage it as well. Let us know what you think in the comments section. What shoot? I think Shooty Gap was off to get a copy as well. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too late, mate. Too late. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's another another round of comic strip adventures. There. Which of those do you think you'll go for, Sarah? Or you, or you think that the free comic book day might be the best the best option? Oh, I don't know now. Yeah, they, they all look really good. And uh, yeah, the free comic yeah. book one is much better than yeah. yeah my my uh, expectations were pretty low. I think we should. Inside. I think we should all get the free comic book day ish issue yeah. and get back here. And, and review it from our various different quarters of Doctor Who appreciation and see what we make of it all. That's 24 pages out in May, even though it's confusingly June's. Is it June's or July solicitations, Gary? It's weird how that works, isn't it? Well, is I mean, they, they, boy, you know, in a lot of the, in a lot of the, the solicitation catalogs that, you know, come out here every month, they start hawking free comic book day, like back in, like, October. <laughs> No yeah. <laughs> for a really, really long time. Yeah. And um, uh, I I read somewhere, I don't know, Dan, if you or John can confirm this, that, that Free Comic Book Day, obviously, you said is, is May the 4th. And I'd heard that the first issue of, they haven't said if it's ongoing or a miniseries with the 15th Doctor is going to be in July. Yeah, it's out pretty soon afterwards, and it will be with the same creative team okay. as well. So that's Dan Waters and Kelsey Ramsey. They're going to be the uh, artist, the writer, and artist on this title, respectively. So, 
yeah, it's going to be a proper sampler of of what to expect when the ongoing kicks off. I mean, I guess it's it's smart that they're timing this to free comic book day will be right around the time when the series starts. Yeah. No, I, think this, I think it's actually one of the best decisions of this team's actually made. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the only, the only team <laughs> with their brains. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lots of pretty pictures will of course be within the, the covers of both of those titles. If we keep our fingers crossed, let us know what you think in the comment section, but it wouldn't be type 40. I think even type 40 extra, if we didn't head off, without looking at a couple of pretty pictures of our own. This is a bit Yay. of a clap from Paul Hanley. You had the Cyberman collection up a moment ago, Gary. I've always loved this. This is a fabulous picture featuring all of the Cybermen from all of their oh, appearances, yeah. even in comic wow. book form there, right the way from the 10th planet and even earlier, all the way through, right to those Paul McGann Cybermen there at the far right and then breaking out of the case were and the Dan, new notice Cyberman. on notice on the left there uh the yeah. second figure at his feet is yeah. that's from i think that colin baker story from, the world yes, shapers where um they they hypothesized that the cybermen were descended from the vord in that's the good. story the keys of mariners and that's what that little weird helmet oh thing okay is. it's a hybrid wow I like how there's even nods to Adrian Salmon's one-page black and white Cybermen strip at the top there, John. You, if you yeah. recognise on the left, there's that little icon. We've got that, and then the uh, the icon, the the insignia there from the corporation in the invasion. You've got the Time Lord symbol, which was previously the yeah. Vogan symbol. <laughs> lots of little kisses to the past there. Oh, it's, yeah. oh, it's wonderful. You've got, yeah, I was looking I at all the little... Cyber match look great, don't they? You they know. do. Um, and not a cyber woman in sight, thank goodness. Oh, <laughs> so nearly perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. No, I, think, I think we can survive without the cyber. Yes, woman. absolutely. <laughs> Other than that, yeah. Paul, absolutely fantastic artwork from all the way back He's in twenty. He's amazing. Oh. Yeah, it's always worth another yeah. look at that. I think something brand new to finish off with. It's this one, which this is actually a photo one, but it's definitely comic influence. Can you can you spot us to why? As the Sixth Doctor uh, and Perry yeah. there against the rocks, there it actually looks oh, like shit. the place where Captain Kirk wrestled. Oh. Yes, it does. <laughs> but if you look in between them, you can see, see a little penguin there. Pick up a penguin. Yeah. Who who could that, that be? Is that Frobisher? It is Frobisher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Sure. This is the work of Kellogopolis over on Twitter, X as it is now known. And uh, the doctor's there in his, uh, this is a mixture, I think, because they've used a composite of the sixth doctor from season 23, and obviously Perry from season 23 as well. But it's just his head and his haircut are of that era. Everything below the neck is from his earlier mm -hmm. appearances in season 22 and 21 yeah yeah right. it works really works it, really well that's good again, work these people are so talented aren't they i mean i i'd spend hours just trying to figure out what i'm doing with a crayon let alone you know it's of course, uh, hats that's off when you. all those strips john that john ridgeway illustrated back then mm. a lot of those were in that precise period weren't they yeah exactly right yeah, yeah. and uh Oh, magical yeah, time. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, Six, Perry, and Frobisher for a lot of that era. Yeah. Happy Frobisher memories. Always in, always in black and white as well. I think they still think they look better in black and white, but I can take yeah. this from Kellogopolis in full colour. It's fine, it's fine. It, look, it reminds me of like an album cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jefferson Starship or something like that. Yeah, it went really well. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I, I I do like this, and anything that uh, harkens back to the nineteen eighties too, and that particular time yeah. in fandom when it was uh, yeah when Doctor Who Monthly had just become Doctor Who Magazine. God, such happy memories. Yeah. Let us know what you think of all of it, of course. And if you are a fan artist of any description, whether it's a digital artist or a traditional artist, we'd love to get your work up on our view screen here on Type 40 Extra or on Type 40 Live. Speaking of which, we're back with that too in a couple of days, as always. Sarah, 
<laughs> you're getting you're getting your uh, I was going to say your lips, your your mouth, your your vocal cords ready for another oh, round sh- of rambunctious Doctor Who conversation. Always from eight o'clock every Thursday on the Type Forty channels. I am indeed. I was wondering where you were going with that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the way our streams go. God uh, yeah. yeah. Always. Oh, there's, oh, there's so much to talk about, and oh, have we got yeah, lots to say about. <laughs> Uh, a be. recent announcement. <laughs> it's going to be a belter, of oh, course. Boy. This so can make sure you've got your notifications turned on for all of that, as well as the podcasts and more extra videos. Doubtless, doubtless coming up. Yes, pulls open, pulls open. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you back here. You. Particularly yeah, as yeah, I know you're both Thank comic you. book enthusiasts, yeah. comic book gurus. Certainly more so no, than we bow, than I. we bow down to you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it, give it a few weeks. You'll be, you'll be at alpha yeah. level. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. it. I think the comic book bug is kind of catching because it is, in all seriousness, it's a, it's a quick and easy way of getting an extra fix of whichever property you know when it's franchise stuff whichever property it is that you follow i mean you can get them in comic book form it just sort of particularly in between seasons of something it just keeps your interest ticking over and that's what i feel that they've been missing all these years through not through having titan asleep at the wheel of this license uh, again i only half blame them you can't yeah. blame them for not throwing their biggest guns at a property which they're not supported supported by with a strong series on the television to drive people to seek out their title in the yeah. first place. But there we are. We've put the Hooniverse to rights once more, and uh, you can get them in front of your eyes there. Check out the free comic book day edition and this new collection of the backup strips, and then, then get back to us in the comments section. Thank you, everybody, for your company on this one we'll have you back again soon i hope but yeah that's it we'll see you in the comment section for more bye 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 bye